Hello and welcome to a guide to a Slayer task every single player that is going for level 99 or 120 Slayer should be doing. Whenever you're ready, grab your cup of tea, sit back, relax, and enjoy. For RuneScape guides, content, and news, be sure to subscribe. The only hard requirement for this method is level 35 Slayer to get these creatures as a task. And while you can safe spot these creatures and take virtually no damage, having higher combat stats is highly recommended to get the most out of this method. So which creatures are we actually talking about? We're talking about the Greater Demon Ash Lords and Berserkers found in the Deep Wilderness. Both these two creatures have 110,000 life points and either give 12,000 or 14,666 Slayer experience per kill. These creatures can be assigned by Simona, hence the level 35 requirement, Durodil, Kurodil, Morvan, Laniakia, and Mandriff, depending on the type of task. Currently, there are three different types of tasks that you can use to actually kill these creatures and still gain Slayer experience, being the Greater Demon Demon's task, the Demon's Cluster task, or specific Ash Lord and Berserker tasks. Now, while you do get Wilderness Slayer chests from the Mandra Slayer Mast, I would not suggest using that Slayer Mast and instead grabbing a task outside the Wilderness, then completing it inside the Wilderness instead, because all of those other Slayer Masters will have access to your block and prefer list, or you will have access to that when grabbing a task from them. Here's a list of useful things you can bring along to increase your experience per hour or make this task much easier, with the most important thing being the Infernal Puzzle Box Tier 3. Reason being is it reduces the amount of damage you take and increases the amount of damage you deal inside the wilderness. This effect only becomes stronger as you go up the tiers of the Infernal Puzzle Box, but having Tier 3 will at least give you that buff. Pretty much everything else on this list, apart from the Demon Slay and Venture Perk, which you could easily have access to, is for high-level players, which will be doing the high-level AFK method. While doing Slay in the wilderness, your threat level will increase, which is only reset by using a Trill Be Gone item, leaving the wilderness or dying. Basically, you're going to have to deal with the ambushes or volcano attacks, which both aren't a big deal. The ambushes can be avoided quite easily or tanked if you're using a high level setup and super anti-fires or the old overload cells. The volcano attacks can be tanked, but they can also be reduced in terms of damage by using the volcanic protection items, which you can simply bring along in your inventory. If you are AFKing, these are highly recommended. Greater Demon Ash Lords and Berserkers can be found in the northwestern part of the wilderness at around level 40 to 45 wilderness. You can teleport to these demons by using the wilderness teleportation system and going to the level 44 location. You can choose which level wilderness you go to after completing the hard wilderness achievements, otherwise you're going to need to hop around randomly. You're able to access the teleporters by using them themselves or by using an obelisk shard or alternatively a portable obelisk. The latter being the infinite untradeable version. Greater Demon Ash Lords and Berserkers will attack you on site and are incredibly dangerous to players that do not have a high level gear setup. For players that do not have a high level gear setup, you're going to want to lure the Berserker version, so the melee version of these demons, to one of the various safe spots. That could be using this part near the lava, or using the banker to block the demon's ability to walk into melee distance and attack you. Or using the ice strike worms and rocks in the snowy part to block the berserkers there. But the best and most straightforward version is by luring multiple berserkers and ash lords, so the magic ones as well, to this gate, closing the gate, standing near the ladder in line of sight of the gate, and simply attacking them. Using this safe spot, you're able to lure multiple, sometimes up to four greater demon ash lords and berserkers for you to take out one by one, and sometimes even with multiple hits like greater chain, multiple at once, but mostly one by one, as casually as killing a goblin. The only thing you need to do is re-aggro some of them, or sometimes even go outside the gate, and then lure some to the gate, and then go back to your safe spot, to continue taking them out. As for gear, simply use the highest level ranged or magic gear you have available to you and do not forget to use your auras like Supreme Runic Accuracy or Maniacal as the higher accuracy is here, the more damage you'll be dealing against these demon ash lords and berserkers. If you want to increase experience per hour, you can use a scrimshaw of sacrifice to gain 50% more experience at the cost of your drops which really aren't worth that much anyway. These monsters should be done for experience only, so you should be using a Scrimshaw Sacrifice to maximize your gains. Additionally, you can stack a 50% XP or 50% Prime Bomb with the Scrimshaw to gain 100% more experience. 
With that covered, let's continue with the high level method of this creature being an AFK method using a cannon, which really consists of you slapping down either a Royal Dwarf Cannon or the Dwarven Siege Engine right in front of this gate in the wilderness, aggroing demons and DPSing them down. This method, while it does require a serious amount of high level gear, will reward you with an experience rate of 2 million base layer experience per hour, which can be doubled to 4 million experience per hour when on double XP. If you use things like the Demon Slayer Ability Codex and you have the Demon Slayer Adventure Perk on your gear, that can be even higher. I used 4 pieces of crippling armor with the Cinnabane Gloves for extra poison damage. My weapon, despite AFKing, was the Fracture Staff Armadil for its high tier and accuracy. Also being the reason I use the Essence of Finality Amulet. Zerk Cape for extra damage for Omni Power, Maniacal boost damage and accuracy, Ring of Death, just in case, you know, you mess up, you're dead. Relic powers can be switched around, you know, you can use the Conservation of Energy Relic, which is one I actually use first as well. But if you want more survivability and more damage when your health is low, Death Ward and Berserker's Fury are both very nice. As for the action bar, if you don't have an ability like Magma Tempest, don't worry, you absolutely do not need it, it just simply helps. As for the inventory setup, I'd say it's quite a straightforward one. I'm using some Grasping Rune Pouches to save some money on runes and to simply hold those runes without clogging up my inventory. Ancient Elven Ritual Shard and Enhanced Excalibur to use every now and then to heal back up and give me some prayer points in case I'm running low for whatever reason or my Power of Penance run out. The Power of Penance of course being used for prayer points and to completely AFK here, although that being said you don't need it. Alternatively you could just bring along Super Restores and Prayer Potions. Elder Overload Salves of course to use for maximum damage output including protection against Dragonfire in case an ambush spawns and you get clapped by Dragonfire. Weapon Poison plus 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 flasks for the extra poison damage. We are rocking a Blood Reaver familiar. You can use a Ice Night Hill instead for accuracy or rip a demon for extra damage, it is up to you. Quantum Incense Sticks to increase our poison damage even more. Infernal Puzzle Box for that extra damage output and damage reduction inside the wilderness and the Volcanic Protection to protect us from those Volcano Bombs. As for the cannon, you should absolutely be using a Dwarven Siege Engine here as it has far more range than the old Act Coil and will actually aggro those demons for you. Now that might seem like a lot, but this method in itself is really simple and a good way of gaining Slayer experience. In fact, it is the second best task in the game to do for Slayer experience and it is one of the longest tasks as well. You can sit here quite comfortably for nearly an hour or a little bit more depending on your own speed when doing a demon's cluster task. But remember, just because a task is slow doesn't mean it's bad because when a task is slow, it means you're able to train Slayer continuously without needing to grab a new task. Speaking of getting these tasks, if you want to get these as often as possible, be sure to prefer greater demons and the Demon's Cluster task of using Ikea Girl to automatically extend and get these tasks more often. With that being said, we've come to the end of this guide. If you're interested in more Slayer related stuff, be sure to check out my Slayer data spreadsheet down in the description below. Catch you guys in the next one. Peace.